brought to the forefront to win this competition? Mm -hmm. Um, so for me, I think really speaking from the heart, right? Like with any business owner, what drives you, what motivates you, like your goals galvanize you. So for me, I just spoke about my experience as a younger gymnast. Um, I never truly felt comfortable being in a predominantly white sport, white coaches, white teammates. So I knew when I was in a position to open up my own gym, I was going to primarily serve our population and I just kind of spoke from the heart. What's going on, y'all? Text podcast summit to 33777. And that's right. And be at Midtown Tech Hive, 6 p.m., April 18th. See you there. See y'all there. What's going on, y'all? Welcome to the Pull Up Experience. We have another great edition for you guys. Episode 197. Mm -hmm. We're on the road to 100 episodes, and we have another great edition. We have Coach K with us today. This is mm -hmm. a, a great episode. Been in the, in the way, Wayne. You guys haven't seen the episode. Check it out with Tenor. Yeah. We had uh, Demetrius, and it was a great episode. And we like, we got to have her to, to her Thank story, you, you know? <laughs> so it's, we, have, we have a great one coming for you guys. And then we got Miss Brittany with us today. Hey, we got Steve in the building. That's right. And y'all already know who I am, okay? <laughs> So yeah, yeah, we got a good one for y'all today. And y'all know I like to talk every episode. I'm gonna ask you represent your hood. What, 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 part, what part of Cleveland are you from? Shaker. Shaker, oh, okay, yes. Shaker in the building. You gotta distinguish between Shaker and Cleveland. Yeah. Oh, I am Shaker born and raised. Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah, right. Hey, listen, listen, shout out to Shaker, man. It's, you know what, it's so funny because we talked off camera, but it's so many great Shaker alumni. I don't know what they're doing at Shaker, where some entrepreneurs are coming out of that joint. Yeah. But hey, the best. That, come on, no, hey, hey, listen, listen, I ain't gonna knock it, you know? <laughs> So okay, so let's start from the beginning. So, where were you in gymnastics like early on? Did your parents like they seen you you doing a car wheel? Like oh yeah, she got it right there. <laughs> so you know it's funny. Um, I was raised by a single mom, and I mm. love my mom. She is literally my best friend. We talk like several times a day. Yeah. So she actually enrolled me in gymnastics when I was two. Mm. So I started at the age of two, and it just kind of transpired into recreational gymnastics, mm. competitive gymnastics, and then middle school, high school, um, cheerleading, college. I kind of was doing it basically for like twenty years. Wow. So I was a Kent State. Mm -hmm. um, um, club gymnast and can stay competitive cheerleader. Mm. Wow. Okay. Um, so let me ask you this, and, and this is, uh, uh, I can ask this to you specifically, when you were doing gymnastics, and I know I, I found myself, when I was doing fencing, it was not too many of us sure. in the room. Did you happen to find yourself doing that with gymnastics? Of course, of course. I just recall as a younger gymnast how uncomfortable I felt. Mm. Um, I did not have coaches that looked like me, um, very seldom teammates that looked like me, and I kind of struggled to feel like accepted. I always felt as if I had to work like twice as hard mm -hmm. to feel equal. Just from like my hair type, you know, people wanted to touch my hair, and why does um, my hair look like that, body types, and as a kid, you know, you just feel uncomfortable for me. And I, mm. I really wish back then I had coaches um, that were representative of kind mm -hmm. of like the black culture to kind of step in and be like, you know, her hair is like this because she was born this way. Right. Different things. And that honestly kind of fueled me to create my own space for, um, you know, gymnasts of color where mm. they just feel comfortable. And, you know, beyond the athletic realm, um, mental health, emotional mm -hmm. health, I kind of struggled with that growing up just because I – I was not included in things. So, wow. so present day, that's that's why I do what I do. Um, we actually have you know almost 150 gymnasts, and come on all of them are <laughs> all of them are athletes of color, and it's just, yeah. it's just beautiful when when they come in. I just see how excited they are, that's awesome. and not maybe even necessarily to even do gymnastics, but just to see me, mm. <laughs> you know, a coach that looks like them that can still do the skills. So it was challenging growing up, but that really fueled me to create up my own space for the girls, and we did. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. No, because I, I, as we all know, representation is everything. Mm -hmm, sure. Seeing someone do what you want to do or that you aspire to do makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. Let you know it's possible, right? Sure. So that's awesome right there. Sure. They see me and they see what's possible. I didn't have that growing up. So, yeah. um, you know, thank God for ordering my stuff because I didn't mm -hmm. have that representation growing mm -hmm. up. But he fueled me to create that space for girls. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, my girls now, they know they're that girl. Mm -hmm. they, they, they know, know now. They know, yes. They know that they can do anything that, that they set their mind to. And they know that if it's possible for me, it's possible for well, them too. Well, so it's beautiful. It's just, it, it just brings me honestly to tears to know that I'm not only shaping little girls, I'm shaping young women. Mm. So I love it. I love Time it. So. <laughs> Time so. Thank you, Steve. Steve, are you on it? <laughs> so let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about the beginning days because yeah. um, 
let, let me start with this. What is the biggest mis misconception people have about being a gymnast? Um, so I think with gymnastics, the misconception is that, you know, it, it is typically a predominantly white sport, but there mm -hmm. are so many other athletes of color mm -hmm. that can do gymnastics. Mm -hmm. I think it's seen as a sport that is not inclusive, right? Yeah. You go to gymnastics meet, who do you see? Who do you typically see? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you typically mm -hmm. don't see um, gymnasts like us, coaches like us, um, judges like us. So I think that's a big misconception that it's only for, you know, athletes that maybe have money mm -hmm. or athletes that just have um, what's what I'm looking for, just different outlooks in life. So yeah. I think um, it's important to know that with gymnastics, and this is why I also started it, we are um, underrepresented in the black community. Wow. So I know, and our girls know that they can do this, mm -hmm. right? When we start our competitive program, uh, you know, we'll ba essentially have an all black gymnastics team. And um, that is like, unheard of. That's like unheard of. So mm -hmm. it's important for them to know that they matter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, regardless of what society says, regardless of it, still even to this day being kind of a predominantly white sport, mm -hmm. it's important that they feel included. That's good. So. <laughs> That's good. And let me ask you this because um, now I remember when uh, Simon uh, Biles. I was gym, uh, was doing her thing, and I remember oh, the Simone. Simone. Oh my god! That's okay. I did it. I t a little, a little. We didn't talk about it before camera. I did it again, but she. I I never forget the contributions uh, that was around her. They were saying she had. Um, not saying. How I said they were saying that because of how she was built, or just because she had a uh, advance over her counterparts sure, or whatnot. Sure. Mm -hmm. Did you find yourself in that same? People say the same thing about you while you were doing while you're doing gymnastics. So honestly, with you know, with the gymnastics type of body, you're going to be muscular, right? I mm -hmm. mean, all of the training, all of the hard work, and all the ethics. So, uh, just I can relate a little bit to Simone from that, but I can just from an educational standpoint, I can re relate more to Gabby Douglas. Mm -hmm. Gabby mm -hmm. Douglas was ridiculed over her hair, over her texture, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. as a black woman any type of sweat, our hair is going to react a certain yeah. way. And for society to talk about an Olympian's hair, we're yeah. worried about the wrong thing. Right. And, and what's important to note is that people that were talking about her hair were our people. Yeah. And that's a problem to me. So I, I, right. I, I wow. felt really strongly about that because I had um, a lot of issues with my hair growing up. Mm -hmm. I was in gymnastics. It was sweating. And my hair is different. My hair mm -hmm. can't stay in a bun the whole gymnastics. Yeah. <laughs> so that's just the reality <laughs> of black hair texture. So mm -hmm. um, I felt for Gabby. And I think that kind of caused some, you know, mental health issues with her too, wow. you know, self-esteem mm -hmm. issues. This girl is an Olympian and we're talking about her hair. Right. right. Like, you got bigger things to can, talk we can, about. And the people yeah. talking about her hair, can you do the cartwheel? Can you do the double back yeah. handspring? You know, just things like that. We're just worried about the wrong thing. And I, <laughs> I hate that she had to experience that. But she's back. Yeah. Gabby is she back is. and Simone. So I'm excited to compete. God willing, they will both be competing in the Olympics mm, this year. So that's good. I'm excited for them. <laughs> and I, I think my biggest pet peeve were anybody who was, because criticism is needed. I'm not going to sure. knock it. But, if you've never done the thing that sure. you're critiquing, mm -hmm. critiquing, can you Damn, even, please. come on now, yeah. seriously. Have please. several seats. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Turn the episode. Yeah. <laughs> Have several seats. I like that. <laughs> so, okay, okay. All right. I want to talk about the beginning days. Let's talk about from you going from, I want to create my own space for young black men and uh, young men and women to get into gymnastics. What do, they, what do they look like? Because I'm pretty sure the concept was foreign to something like you want to do what again sure sure um so um going back i think it's important to know uh throughout my gymnastics career right i was raised by a single mom so mm -hmm. if you know anything about kids sports it's expensive oh, yeah. <laughs> especially competitive gymnastics so i remember my mom just working all these jobs you know to try to make sure i never wanted anything and she did so i just have so much respect for her because mm -hmm. as a mother That's now i'm thinking ooh, it's a lot it's, mm -hmm. a, it's, a, it's a lot and i'm married going you know mm -hmm. raising raising my daughter and just it's, it's a lot um for a two-parent household so i can only imagine mm -hmm. what she did as a single mm -hmm. parent um but you know as a gymnast kind of going through these challenges of who am I? Like, you know, I don't have a coach that looks like me. My teammates do not look like me. So I really struggle with that self-esteem standpoint. Like, am I worthy of this? I can remember as a younger gymnast, it appeared to me that I was held back. Um, mm. You know, I was doing, like, advanced skills and competing at a very low level. Wow. Um, so that, you know, as a kid, I, you know, I don't know any better when you're a kid. You're just following what the adults can say. Um, but that wow. started to kind of put that drive in me, like, okay, mm. like, I don't think this is how it's supposed to be. And fast forward through several years of gymnastics my career ultimately ended because my mom could not continue to pay mm. I remember and I never spoke about this publicly you know the last day of gymnastics she didn't pay tuition so I essentially had to wait outside for a oh. ride to come because she was at work and 
as a teenager, like that's you know, as a kid, I you yeah. know, yeah. that that's a lot. That's kind of a lot to take mm-hmm. in. So I knew then, mm-hmm. oh no, no child will ever feel that way oh. when I open my own space. No child <laughs> will ever feel like they are not good enough. You wow. know, so it, it it makes a difference who's training your child. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I look back at my previous coaches, and it's not too many positive memories, mm-hmm. but I have joy now because our girls they will always look back and say, Coach K, <laughs> Coach K was there. She inspired me. She encouraged me, and that really is what keeps me going. With any business, there's hard days, right? Yeah. You know, that's just life. Um, but what keeps me going is knowing that I'm in God's will and doing His purpose mm-hmm. for my life and inspiring, you know, black, white, I- any walk of life gymnast that wants to yeah. come my way. And they're changed. So I, I'm mm-hmm. very humbled by I have a small yet pivotal role in their lives. So mm-hmm. come on. very blessed by that. That's good. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Because uh, I, I just know uh, when, you're, when you're the trailblazer, and there's, there's there's not a real blueprint to go behind. You're literally just go, making up, I mean, not making it as you go, but you kind of are. Sure, sure. Right, right. And I love the fact that out of what was not saying trauma, well, maybe, maybe yeah, yeah. Out of trauma, he was like instead of it, I've known people they go into trauma and that that be the end. They mm-hmm. like, sure, no, sure. That fueled you to like, I'm gonna mm-hmm. do something different. I yeah, love that. That's so awesome. Definitely. Um, and I think with any business and just not gymnastics, but any business owner, what's the need you're trying to fix? Mm-hmm. And I, I found it. I found the need to have a safe and comfortable space for underrepresented athletes. Mm. Awesome. Yeah, it's, 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 it's amazing. I'm just truly, truly honored. You know, looking back, I can honestly say this walk has not been easy. You know, kind yeah. of wrestling with God. Is this what you want me to do? Because yeah. I'm not seeing it. Um, but now I think I'm so um, steadfast and immovable and unwavering with kind of his will for my life that, mm-hmm. you know, I know that we'll be here to stay. So. Right. That's awesome. <laughs> Speaking of that, Coach K, so how did those beginning, you know, like startup years, how did that mm-hmm. look? Yeah. Um, starting your own business, that, you sure. know, that in itself is walking by faith. It's a lot. <laughs> yes. But, uh, but yeah, tell us a little bit more about how, you know, some of the things that you were able to overcome. Mm-hmm. So I started, initially started at Balanced Chair Gymnastics in 2016. I had graduated with my master's, saved a little bit of money. Um, so with me, I, I was set on not having debt, right? So I moved mm-hmm. back home, stayed with my mom, um, saved like forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 to mm-hmm. be able to um, not get any loans. Now, there's nothing wrong with loans. There's nothing about, wrong with getting grants, but I wanted things my way. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when you get money from other entities, they, you know, and I'm just, I'm pro black, right? So mm. sometimes you know people may have a problem with that. So I knew that I was gonna um, bootstrap everything and pay for everything. So um, and that's what I did. So um, Asia, one of my very good friends, shout, shout out to Asia, Asia um, <laughs> with Create a Space, Let's Make a Change, Bike Creole Kitchen. That is one of my dearest friends. She actually allowed me to host gymnastics classes at her daycare Mm -hmm. and that's another important thing having friends that support you Mm -hmm. Um, and she did that she was so welcoming and so great just to kind of get my feet wet you know Mm -hmm. I didn't have this big gym yet I didn't have a set space just kind of trial and error and it Mm -hmm. did really good Um, we started growing though Mm -hmm. so you know lugging equipment in my (laughs) me and my mom's car you know having beans sticking out the window it just wasn't conducive for so long Mm -hmm. so we kind of took a little break um for about a year and a half trying to figure out, you know, what I want to do, you know, space-wise. Um, then I started renting classes out or space for my church, the mm-hmm. Word Church. Um, and me and Lady Verner are also really super cool, super tight. She spoke words into me, you know, Absolutely. she knew my future, mm-hmm. even when I couldn't see it. So she really spoke life into me, um, held classes there for about about six months or so, started growing again, so now we kind of need that set mm-hmm. space. Um, and then the, currently the space that we're in, it took a while to kind of get there. And through that waiting time, um, I feel like God wasn't really speaking to me. Because, mm-hmm. um, you know, we want things our way. That's we right. want things fast. And, um, you know, he allowed me to go through a season of silence where he just, mm-hmm. he really worked wow. on me. And was like, you know, if you really want this, you have to wait for my time. And we ended up mm-hmm. finding this great space. We've been in Warrensville Heights um, since 2019. Um, and it's been a beautiful space. We've grown. I've had so many precious events there from just my wedding shower, baby shower, mm-hmm. just so many precious moments there. And I, I love this space. And God willing, we will have a new space um, later yeah. this year because we're growing, continuing to Come grow. On, and right. we'll love to offer competitive gymnastics now. So I'm, I would like to tap into another realm. Mm-hmm. I have, I'm have i training girls with private lessons that compete at other gyms mm-hmm. um, just because we don't offer the competitive service, but they come to me for that inclusiveness. Yeah. 
Yes. So I'm excited wow. to tap into that um, yeah. kind of realm of competitive gymnastics. And of course, spaces and resources, mm. what we need for that. And it'll come. Mm. It'll come. Yeah. Right. I love yeah. it. This uh, great. No, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And then, and then I, I, love, I love how you said that because, like I said, shout out to Asia. Because once yeah. again, <laughs> uh, we, I, 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 and I want to give her applause because she, hands down, yeah. if, you, if she has some resources, she, she's <laughs> she going to give it. She's going to give it to you. <laughs> Like she, I seen her on Friday. She was giving me so much game. I'm like, dang, girl. Mm-hmm. And it's like, like she's freely giving. Like, okay, like I need to pay you for this. Yes, I think now. we need to sow seeds to Asia every time I see her. Absolutely, <laughs> and, I, and I love that, and I love that, and, and I, I say this to anybody. Uh, I feel like uh, COVID, when everybody was feel like they're an entrepreneur, it like reset everything. Everyone sure. is like, mm-hmm. I want to pursue what I love, Absolutely. but at the same time, we, I feel like people are becoming more collaborative. Sure. In my opinion. Um, and I want to talk about the fact that you name Lady Vernon, you name Asia, you name. How important is that collaborative piece in people who want to start their own business, in your opinion? Sure, I think it's really important. I think sometimes as entrepreneurs, we think we're alone. Mm. And, you know, God gave us the assignment, God gave us the vision, but there's also people in our life that can kind of bring out what we can't see, right? Um, as individuals, we have blind spots, right? Yeah. We need yeah. a community, a network of people that support us. And that comes with discernment, right? Mm. Not everyone may have the best intentions. But it's good to have that support network. I couldn't imagine doing this alone, mm. right? There's at least one person um, that any entrepreneur can find just to help guide them. Can you read this for me? Can you, you know, what do you think? I just think sometimes we might be stuck in our own ways, and it's okay to ask for help. Mm-hmm. And I do it. I probably ask for help now because <laughs> you know I know that I cannot do all things in my own strength. So it's good for that collaborative network. That's so good. Yeah. That is good. And speaking of collaborative network, let's talk about uh, Miss Tenor Edwards. Yes. Right now. If you guys haven't seen that episode, once again, check it out. Yeah, she's it amazing was, too. Yeah, <laughs> awesome, right. awesome. Yeah. And uh, I know we, me and Brittany, we were here uh, at the first uh, iteration of whatnot. We seen how you won the fish competition, which yeah. you yes. did a great job. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, we could talk about that also, about that effort also. Sure. Um, so I've actually applied for a lot of. Um, programs before, like, mm. you know, funding, just, you know, gymnastics is expensive, mm. um, the equipment is expensive. So um, with Tenor, it was so great as a black woman, she was in a position to help me, yeah. right? A lot of times uh, we may not have mm. resources, right? So she really saw me as a young, um, you know, black woman really trying to help her community, and mm. I love that. I think it's quite possible that some of the other things I applied for just wasn't in alignment with, yeah. what, I, with what I seek, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, tonight and um, I think what we look at is black excellence on display right now. I'm so blessed. Uh, from the moment I walked in the door, I heard Mr. Leeton and, and congratulations and everything now all the way up to upstairs. Same thing, man, it's a blessing. I am feeling really grateful, very blessed. Um, it's just an amazing experience to be able to be in the room with so many amazing people and yes. people that are game changers and world changers that's, Absolutely. you know, breaking bread and ma- making businesses in Cleveland, Ohio. This is a night, like, for one for the books for not only Cleveland, but Ohio. I'm so proud of Tenora. be pro the underserved, Come pro on. black girls. I think it's important that they know who they are and they that they're loved That's and they good. do matter. Um, so it was great. Winning $10,000, when, when the, my name was called, I'm like, wait a second. I'm, I said to my husband, did they just call my name? And it was, it was just... It was amazing. I just have never, you know, felt that sense of joy. Yeah. It really kind of affirmed, like, you are doing the right thing. Come on. Um, you know, I think... God puts you in positions and spaces to really stretch you, and I think He did a lot this year for me alone. And it was it was it was amazing to be able to win that and to really be another example of if I can do it, you can too. Mm-hmm. I'm literally no one special. I am just a girl that um, is disciplined and mm-hmm. follow God's will and just kind of align. You know, I, I listen. So and, and for any entrepreneur, I think the first step is listening. Yeah, um, yeah. that quiet time. Is this is it? What, is this what you want to do? Um, Cause just know it's gonna be some long nights, and that's okay. But if this is what you want to do, you know you have to be disciplined. Yeah, and I have that. <laughs> Took a while though. <laughs> no, no, listen, listen. Yeah. I was gonna ask yeah. someone you credit the discipline to because yeah. I think we all have seen the the entrepreneur who has talent but not discipline, and it has it has made their journey that much harder 
What do you credit that to? Sure, I think um, prayer and discernment. Mm. Um, I think I had to really ask God, like, okay, if this is what you want me to do, I will follow. Yeah. I will follow mm-hmm. suit, and I did, and he's never steered me wrong. Come on, he has never, it's Sunday, y'all. So <laughs> I know it is. Sunday too. He has never just, it's just so amazing, and not to say that every day I had this much faith in him, but I think as you grow and you're rock with him, you really realize, like, hey, I'm mm. doing what I'm called to do, so he opens um, you know, doors that no man can close. And, yeah. and he really does. Just the opportunities that have come my way, it's that's just, so it's all him. I credit all him. And, um, you know, for the non believers, I can't really speak to them because that's, right. that's a different lifestyle. But I yeah. think um, that prayer and discernment every day is I ask God to show me your will. Because mm. my will might be flawed that's and skewed. Right. Like, show me what you want me to do. And, and he has been that for me. That's so good. Yeah. I, love it. I love that. He has. He has. It's just, I'm just so blessed to be able to serve. And that's what I'm here to mm. do. I, I get to do this. So. Come on, I'm honored. <laughs> and you know, you know, you were a church because uh, you know, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you are here to pass the right, right. talking about I get to serve. I do. I do. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what's up. So okay, and, and I know uh, off camera we talked about this, sure. and uh, me and Brittany, you know, me and Brittany, we we we, we, we talking and whatnot, <laughs> and we were talking uh, to Coach K about her her marriage, right? And we were just talking off camera, you know, us being single, us dating out here, <laughs> and, and, too, whatnot. Mm-hmm. and we was like, how you know, how did how did how did you go from uh, still going in your purpose, That's doing, right. mm-hmm. going, for, going for what you wanted to go for as far as your calling, and and navigating the dating life to eventually get get into marriage. Yeah, yeah it's, it's I would not wish dating on anybody right now. <laughs> I, it just don't look like this where it's at. Um, but you know, it's so funny. So no, not too many people know this. So I actually met my husband in 2018 on Bumble. Yeah, um, that's where we met. You know, back then it was not too taboo. I was yeah. just like, you know, let's just see what happens. Mm-hmm. And essentially I slid in his Bumble DM and said, hey, <laughs> after we matched and um, what's so nice about having my husband there, you know, with any marriage, there's trials and tribulations. Yeah, that's, that's just life. Right. Um, but one thing, he has been steadfast with mm. me. Um, it's very hard. First of all, it's hard being married in general. Facts. Being yes. married to an Amen. entrepreneur, that's a whole nother level mm. of um, wisdom I didn't necessarily know going right. into this. Mm. So it's a, it's a learning. We do a lot of trial and error, and he's, he's there. You know, when I'm at the gym, you know, our baby, our mm. baby Drew, she is too. <laughs> and, you know, he's doing what he needs to do as a dad and as a husband. But um, essentially, he allows me to do this. And I, I had to, um, you know, I, I, I'll be honest, I don't always verbalize and appreciate that. God is still working on me with that. Um, but, you know, he allows me to do this. If it was not for him, you know, we would have to have a conversation about it, right? So um, he supports it as best That's as true. he can. Like I said, this is not an easy journey, and he sees the highs, the lows. He sees it firsthand, just how much this is essentially kind of, um, you know, it fuels us. It's, it's a big part of our life, That's and uh, I'm glad that, that he's here with me on this journey, a difficult one, an arduous one, but at the end of the day, he's there. He's there. Um, so it's, it's, it's a long one, but no, that's, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's been there, and I, I just love it. And just speaking of family, you know, being a mom now myself, to my, yeah. my sweet baby girl, I just, <laughs> when she goes to gymnastics, Aww. I want to go to gymnastics. It's massive. Mm. And I just, oh, that just melts my heart to see awesome. my little one created in love, doing what I love yeah. now. Oh, wow. it's, it's just, it's just precious. And, and I, I hope, you know, and aspire if she wants to have this gym when it's time, this mm. will be a legacy to her. Mm. Building that generational wealth, like, you know, and when time has passed, uh, she, her mother will always be remembered as the first black and female mm. owned uh, lady that started the gymnastics gym. Come so I love that. That will be a part of her legacy. So. I have, yeah. I've been like to think of the day. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you, you drop them in gyms because I think that's a that's an awesome legacy right there. Yeah. And I, I I love the fact you said she wants to. A lot of people mm-hmm. they 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 assume their kids want to take on mm-hmm. what, what sure, they what sure. they did, but you, you're giving her an opportunity to make exactly. the choice if she wants exactly. to. Exactly. And I think that's just so beautiful to do right there. Yeah, I love that she will never have to want for anything. And I think back to my mom, like, woo, she grinded, and I'm grinding now for mm-hmm. her. And we do this. For, to set our kids up. We think of other, other cultures, right? Yeah. They set their kids up. So I think in our community, um, less about us, more about our future. Mm. Uh, my, my grandkids, my great grandkids, <laughs> like I want us to really start building that generational wealth so that path for them will be easier. She will yeah. never have to go through what I went through. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay taking that pain from mm-hmm. her. Now there's going to be other challenges in life, right? Because right. this isn't heaven, but I'm glad that I can alleviate some stress, especially mm-hmm. financially. Drew's going to be set. Mm-hmm. She's going to, and I'm speaking that into her now. Like she, she's going to have what she needs to do what she wants. That's so good. That's awesome.
And, I, and one of the things I want to say we do at the Pullis Man, I like to recognize the mentor that we have. Because once again, Pastor Vernon sure. is him. Uh, don't tell me who you're, you're, you're over. Tell me who you're under, <laughs> you're right? right? All right, right. So let me ask you this. Who would you credit to mentors who help helps you in, in, in this space to help? Uh, cultivate your entrepreneur uh, goals? Sure. So I'm going to actually be honest, and hopefully this isn't too biased. My mom. Oh, no. Um, Shout I, out to your mom. Yes, yeah. my mom. Um, okay. She is just a light. And now that I'm a mom myself, I really mm. kind of understand, like, you're going to do whatever you need to do for your child. Mm. And my mom, before my husband, before the gym, before, you know, all these things, she spoke into me. Mm. She saw, essentially, my uh, my beginning from my end almost mm -hmm. she she just knew that there was greatness on my life so she made sure to position me to be able to open this That's like so welcome good. me back home mm -hmm. saving you know just really pursuing my dream and I, I love that about her and we are we are cool my mom that's my girl <laughs> that's like my best friend so I love that she really spoke life into me and she saw things that I didn't mm -hmm. right and I think that comes with a mother's love for her child right yeah. you gonna do whatever you need to do um, to make sure your child is set for life and I love that she she did it, especially as a single mom like she 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 really grinded yeah. and made sure to pay for that gymnastics so I will credit all of that to my mom and you know of course I had friends other family members mm -hmm. that supported me but my my mom was really that kind of initiator. Like, yeah. we gonna do this, okay? I remember when I was uh, lugging equipment to Asia's beautiful establishment, let's make a change daycare. My mom was right there with her mm. car, putting equipment in there when she was tired from work, when she was doing other things. That's so, part, you know, scratching up her cars with equipment. And, <laughs> and I hope that God will be in a position to continue to bless us where I can take some more burden off of her. Like, mm. we want to retire mom. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so. No, that's all, beautiful. All right straight up to my mom. <laughs> no, shout out to her. Yeah. yeah. We're going to be a mom or pop. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Awesome. And like, like you said, and I, I, and I know that you appreciate it, I don't know, Drew's appreciating and I know mm -hmm. the, the legacy is yeah. there. So that's awesome right there. So, okay, and let me ask you this. What would you say to someone who's watching this, a young man, a young lady who sure. wants to pursue, open up their own uh, gymnastics uh, operation? What would, what, would, what would you give them? What, what, if you had to give them like some quick things to say, okay, you need this, this, and this. What would you, what would you tell them what to get prepared to do? Yes, of course. So I think first it's important to know, and I'll reiterate this, I am truly no one special, right? Like oh, I am on. just, I am. You are so <laughs> humble. I, I am, I'm really um, just someone that is disciplined. Like mm. I'm someone that follows instructions. Yeah. And I think if, if you would like to start your own business first, know your why. Um, because money, money can always be made, right? You can right. just go get a job at nine to five. But mm. when you take on this entrepreneur, your life just know that some things are going to change right Shh. you're gonna, you're not going to have a lot of time right steve harvey said this so great he said there's 24 hours in a day and if you spend one third of that sleeping are you really doing what you need to do and i don't get much sleep right now <laughs> maybe from the fact that i have a two-year-old too but <laughs> it's, it's important that you really understand your why because your why is going to guide you on those hard days okay mm. and, and those days are going to come so i think first understanding your why right and just being disciplined why do you want to do this um in money like i said is always going to be made but make sure you know your why and then your how right so for me i knew that i was not going to take out loans i was going to do whatever i could i worked mm -hmm. a couple jobs right mm -hmm. to save up this 40 50 thousand to get my um gym up and running so how are you going to fund this there's going to be there's going to need some type of resources yeah. right mm -hmm. um also understanding that not every yes is a good yes so people might come to you, people might, you know, there might be different opportunities, but does it align with your why? Mm. That's why I start with my why first. Um, there's been different opportunities that may have approached me and it just did not align mm. with me. So um, not saying yes to everything. And I think lastly, that prayer about discernment, right? Because mm. as humans, right, we kind of see our own lens. Mm. So trying to have that community of collaborative people, support, faith, I think that's going to be um, really helpful and really that's understanding real. the point about being an entrepreneur, right? Not many people can do this. Mm -hmm. Everybody sees the fruits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't see our labor. <laughs> and it, 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 it is quite arduous. It is, mm -hmm. it is a journey, but it's so worth it. I would not change this. Um, mm -hmm. And when I think about what I would be doing if I wasn't doing this, mm -hmm. I honestly, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, because I think my, my alignment is just so that's real. Good. I don't know what else I would be doing. Wow. Um, this that's how you know you're in purpose, though. That's how you know. It's driven. 
It is, and he has just continuously made a way with our with our gym, with the business. We have leotards, we're getting apparel. Mm. It's just, it's a whole community. So I'm, I'm very excited about this. That's out, awesome. <laughs> that's out. That's, out, that's, that's just a great segue yeah. to, to my next question. Okay. Before we talk about the past, talk about the press, talk about the future. What does the mm-hmm. future hold? Like you said, I hear merchandise. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, let me ask, mentorship is that is that in the plan? Yes. You know, I'm 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 prayerful, thinking about how can I pour into more children, mm. right? More kids. So I'm trying to kind of tap into some YouTube things. How can I reach a young gymnast struggling struggling in California mm. or a gymnast struggling Come you know, on not now. in Ohio? YouTube, right? We have this social media mm-hmm. platform, and I just did a quick search not too long ago. Type in like black home gymnastics content mm-hmm. or black gymnastics. It's not much it's of not, us. It's uh, not ooh. much. So again, I Come tapped into now. another oh realm, <laughs> another realm where there's a need, right? There's not many girls that are doing home gymnastics mm-hmm. content, especially home gymnastics content for um, black and brown gymnasts. So yeah. I think about maybe there's some situations where parents could not afford gymnastics, but generally speaking, they might have a home. They might have Come a couch. We can do these splits, we can do these bridges, at least it gives them that's something. Good. So, yeah, that's another thing I'm gonna tap into. And of course, our bigger space, um, God willing, we will have a bigger space come this fall, mm-hmm. and we'll be able to uh, double, triple our enrollment and really mm-hmm. kind of take hold of our city's girls. And I'm ready for that. We've got I've got great coaches that have the heart of me, the heart to serve, mm-hmm. and the heart to pour into our underrepresented athletes. So, I'm excited. I oh, can't listen, wait. I we're, can't we're wait. Excited for yeah. it. That's awesome, right there. And, and the fact that if anything I would say we got from your story on top of the million things <laughs> is just the fact that God will continue yeah, to bless you guys and expand your territory. Sure he and is, he and is. that's awesome. And yeah, I, yeah. I feel like for any entrepreneur, as you are in your purpose and you're doing what God called you to do, he's going to expand your territory. He will. He will. We all start somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. I started with carrying mats, beams, all types of equipment in my little Hyundai, <laughs> right? <laughs> so me and my mom, but look where we're at now, a set space, birthday parties, private lessons, mm-hmm. waiting lists, I'll, you know, Come it's on just on. so many things. So I think as entrepreneurs, we take the first step, right? Don't get too far ahead. Um, you know, just take that first step and really Absolutely. organize things. Take the first yeah. step. I yeah. see you now. Yes. <laughs> It's coming. It's coming. We always try to look to kind of the end, but let's first start with the beginning. Mm. <laughs> you were dropping gems. Yeah, you sure right? have. And Coach Kane, what's, what's some of the things that you learned earlier in your entrepreneurship that you still use to this day? Mm. Um, I think patience. Oh. <laughs> I think, you know, with my myself and just being so eager and social and bubbly sometimes I want to move too fast Um, and I think what's nice about being in purpose is God will slow you down whether you want to or not so um, I I think he he has really matured me uh, to understand that not everything is going to happen on my time Um, the tools of patience like hey you want this big gym but what are you going to do with this small gym right now so before I get to these next levels you know it's like a a staircase right walk up the steps not the elevator so Mm. I think um, he has really kind of uh, groomed me for sure in that patience and I think some things we also need to know about black businesses in general how I am right now is how I am in the gym Mm. super personable super smiley super welcoming and I think sometimes I don't always get that um, experience at other uh, black owned establishments Mm. and I think it's important to know our our value and our worth and we too you know I think customer service is really key and I um, these girls that are going through our gym doors I look at them as my own daughter or my Mm. younger self so I always make sure that my parents are comfortable, they feel safe, and I think that's important to know with other businesses. Customer service is key. Come on, it man. is, it is, and I am all for supporting black businesses, but I think it's important to know. I think as a whole, as a community, we can we can, we can support each other better. Mm-hmm. We can do better. You know, I'm always willing to learn too. Uh, my younger days, a couple years ago, it was kind of not my way or no way, but I was kind of. Um, stubborn and like you know I'm gonna do things this way but my way is not always the right way mm-hmm. and I think that's why it's important to surround yourself with like-minded individuals and people that have more than you yeah right like speaking of Asia she is great she's got she so is. many resources mm-hmm. and I love that about her and she encourages me right yeah. God mm-hmm. did it for her God do it can, can do it for all of us oh, as absolutely. Well. so mm-hmm. I love that just being humble and realizing like there's uh, enough in the pot for everybody right yeah, There's just, as entrepreneurs, and I feel like especially in Cleveland, we might feel that pressure of, like, competitiveness. Mm-hmm. But honestly, if you know, there's money everywhere, right? There's, oh, no. there's look at the the stores in Giant Eagle, the bread aisle. How many different breads are there, right? Yes. So I think, um, you know, if this is your will, you want to be a business owner, just start it. Come on, Just man. start it. Mm-hmm. it. You know, and have them align your steps, and everything will follow accordingly. 
And like, your story reminds me of the story of uh, many talents, right? And how God gave these guys, you guys in the story, you gave one guy two, four, six, right? And the guy with six, he, he, he expanded with the six, right? The guy with four, he did a little bit less than right. the other six. The guy with two put the two in the dirt and was left it there, right? And this is what always makes me, this not saying scare me, but keeps me alive. It's like, I have to do what God called me to do because sure. if I don't do that, he's going to be like, well, I gave you these right, things for sure. a reason. You did nothing with it, right? And I, I just think about that. And the fact that you are taking what God gave you, you're expanding, mm-hmm. yeah. you're, you're, you're tripling, <laughs> you're, you're quadrupling it. It's like, that's awesome right there. So Thank you. I'm, I I know God's going to continue to expand yeah. territory. It's going to be an amazing story for oh, everyone. Well, thank you. Small, like you said, yeah, humble. Yeah. And that way it can inspire others. Yeah, and I yeah. hope I can. You know, it's it's hard being the only one. I hope that mm-hmm. if there is a young black gymnast or children mm-hmm. in middle school and high school and they see this and be like, okay, she did it right. Mm-hmm. I can do this too. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important when you see um, people that look like you doing what you would like to do, it inspires it you, is. it motivates you. It's hard to realize what's possible if you don't see it. Yep. So, mm-hmm. so I love that. I love that for us. I'm going to need you to have like one, just a little, little bit of Kanye moment. Just be like, talk your stuff. Oh, like one of you, I don't get, I don't worry. I'm, I'm, I'm pressure. I'm like, Coach K, talk your stuff one time. You know what I'm saying? Because like, Instead of carrying that load, drop the house. Gutter Properties will buy your house as is with offers up to $300,000. Need serious repairs, liens, taxes, or judgments? We'll work through your unique situation to get that house off your back. During your free, no obligation appraisal, we maintain social distancing and take every precaution to ensure your experience is safe. Drop the house. Gutter Properties. Call us or visit gutterproperties.com. You know what I'm saying? You'll be humble at the same time. Like you are doing something no one else is yeah. doing. And that's gotta, oh, thank that's, you. That's, that's gotta be said oh. right there. Like yeah. I I'm with the humbleness. Yeah. But at the same time, like let it let it be known, you know, you know what I'm saying? But no, yeah. I, I love it though. I love it. And I, I will say this, and this is my own personal opinion, and if people disagree, you know, that's an irrelevant opinion, but <laughs> I wholeheartedly believe Black athletes need black coaches, specifically black Excuse gymnasts. Me, this real quick. <laughs> I think it's important to know every phone call I get with a new enrollee, and my my parents are so cute, so humble. Mm. You know, they don't want to say they're coming to me because <laughs> I'm the only black yeah. and female owned gym. But they tell me that they but say I want my child we need that. with you. Come on, now. they do, they do, and I'm just so humble by that when they tell me that. And you know, parents are traveling near and far for me mm-hmm. to train their kids. I got a call the other day about a private lesson. This lady is going to be driving two hours, wow. two hours for me, and I was like, "Are you sure you want to drive that far?" She's like, "No, I read the reviews. I looked at the website. This is what my daughter needs." Wow, come on. And I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> like okay, I, re- I received that, and I think it's important to know that." I am. We are training these young girls, right? Mm. And I and I need them to know that they matter. And I think That's depending so on you know, it's very important for parents to know who's training your child, yeah. who's coaching them, what are they giving you, you know. And and two things can be right at the same time, right? A, a, a young gymnast can have a coach that may not look like them, but it may have the best intentions. But I think it's also a true fact that mm. if your coach looks like them, generally speaking, they might have the same intention, right? To see your child grow and learn and mm. and really um, accomplish dreams. So. Yeah. I, I love that about us. I love that my girls, they know, they know who they are. Mm. Not outside of the gymnastics gym. They have the confidence and That's they, they, they right love there. it. That is. So, yeah. <laughs> so, imagine this. And this, this is a question I got because, like like you said, are you ever thinking about franchising or leasing or, or license out your your gym or the concept to other places? Like, take mm-hmm. it nationwide. Yeah, because, and it's something I thought about, too. Yeah. Um, I, I it's love cool, it. Yeah, right, right, exactly. <laughs> it's something that I um, am... I would love to kind of partner with USA Gymnastics, which is mm. the governing body of gymnastics, um, because less than 10% of USA Gymnastics members are of color. Mm. So I, I would love to speak to them, yeah. um, maybe have a, a seminar about how coaches should treat or react mm. to gymnasts of color. Come on now. Because it, it is different. You know, a coach may just be, you know, blindly ignorant and may say something to a child of color, and now that child is traumatized. Mm. And not knowing that, right? I just think it's important to know the etiquette mm-hmm. of how to train a black child mm-hmm. and I think that's important <laughs> that's awesome so I know you would say Jim, you, you, you watch yeah, the episode look, look, I will you know I'll be at their conference this year and I actually mm-hmm. went to their conference last year hundreds of gym owners and coaches and I'll be honest it was less than 10 of us easily, wow. easily. and I was searching I was trying to kind of look and see yeah, like yeah, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. Are there any coaches that look like me and there were not many mm-hmm. and um, I'll be honest I was a little sad by that it kind of just 
it just made me realize that I need to do more. Yeah. We need we need to have more black coaches, mm. black athletes, black gymnasts. Yeah. Just we need that. Um, but I was there. Come I was on, there now, representing. Come represent, on, represent, come represent, on. I was there Come representing on. our gym. Um, <laughs> but I just wish there were more, and I, and I yeah. hope that there will be more. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> like like you now now I, this this is me speak this is me speaking into fruition that there be a conference for black mm. gymnasts in, around the country oh, that, I love that, that that creating that. I can see it. That. I'm I'm that. That's what I'm saying. Yes, ma'am. I receive that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I, I see <laughs> it. it. I, I see it. The fact it's ten percent, that means there's a ter- there's, there's, there's a need out there. Sure, sure. That there representation. Is. There and, is. and I pre- I know and this 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 is what I love about it because the more and more they see the representation, the more and more people are gonna want to join up. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, no. Sure. You, they see you, what's you, possible. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You are a trailblazer. <laughs> so yes. So okay guys, let's get into let's get to our our great simple question, shall we? Uh so as you guys know, in the photo experience, we have these questions that we like to ask our guests. And I love these questions because I love the feedback we get from them because, because they are very interesting and they, they, they kind of feel me. Mm-hmm. So, as you guys know, here at the photo experience, we like to love, we love collaborating. That's, that's, mm-hmm. what, sure. that, that's what we do here. And we want to change the narrative of Cleveland not being the place for collaboration. How do you feel like we change that narrative here? Um, I think we can first change the narrative with not wanting to collaborate with each other by having support, right? Having different events, having different spaces for us. I feel like there's not many spaces for black entrepreneurs to kind of come together, maybe bounce ideas off of each Mm. other, or maybe not as much, right? I feel like when we open those doors, we open ourselves to that support, right? So I feel like if there were more opportunities for us to just kind of have a chat, have a talk, you know, how can we make our city better? Because we're all here, right? We're all here. We're all here, right? So what can we do to make it more beneficial? How can we do better? How can we come together? When you think about other races, they come together, Mm -hmm. right? So what is it about our people that we just have a hard time with oneness? So I'll first start with that. Start with that. (laughs) Hey, you know what? Before the interview, I told her, like, I know, I already know the interview is going to be good. And like, once again, thank you. (laughs) Thank you. I'm so appreciative. (laughs) No, no, this this is awesome. Okay, so let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Uh, When it comes to future club, people you like collaborate in the future, who would you like to collaborate in the future? I would love, love, love to collaborate with Dominique Dawes. Now, if you guys don't know who Dominique Dawes is, trailblazer for black Mm. gymnastics. I remember when I was younger in the 90s, the Magnificent Seven, just watching her and her beautiful Mm. hair, her her body, just looking at her, she inspired me. So I would love to collaborate with her now. I know she has her own gymnastics Mm. gym, just to have a a sit-down conversation Mm. with her. And I don't know if she's ever spoken about this, but what was that like? Yeah. Um, Because if it was hard for me in the early 2000s, what was it like for you in the 90s and the 80s? Just to have like a little sit-down talk with Mm. her. Because mm-hmm. um, she's doing so well now, just beautiful inside and out. But I would love to talk about her beginning stages. Because mm-hmm. um, how did you make it? Because that's a lot of pressure. A black Olympian, yeah. you know, we don't see too many of those. You know, before there was a Simone, before there was the Gabby, mm-hmm. there was um, Dominique Dawes. I remember. I would love that. Oh, yeah. I would love to have a conversation mm-hmm. with her. I know what's that? <laughs> yep, how was that with, with your teammates? Um, you know, did you experience any biases, any differences? Mm-hmm. I would just love to have a conversation mm-hmm. with her, mm-hmm. right? Because she kept going. Yeah. Um, and just from my experiences, not being a, an Olympic gymnast, but a competitive gymnast, I struggled. Mm-hmm. So I can only imagine the pressure for an Olympic gymnast. So, oh, I would love that. <laughs> so, Dominique. if you're watching Dominique, I, know, I, know please, you want Dominique. Yeah, I would love, love, love to, to meet you, collaborate with mm. you, and really think about how can we make the future generation better. Come on, mm. I love that. <laughs> That's good. Unless you watch, I know you watch Dominique. Yeah, right. we're going to tell him to tag her. Yeah, we're going to tell him to tag her. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Awesome. And it's going to come to pass because yeah. everything that you're saying, yeah. we yeah. already oh, know. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So, so, um, so of course, when it comes to legacy, which mm-hmm. I must say, I mean, the story's still being written, so yeah. it's going to be a good one for you. What would you like, uh, Coach K, for your legacy to be for yourself? And then for everything that you're going to have, you know, business lies underneath you. Yeah, I would, I would really ultimately like my legacy um, to be as the the woman that didn't stop, right? There were, there were, <laughs> there were a lot of roadblocks, and I know I'm, I'm no different. A lot of entrepreneurs have roadblocks, but mm-hmm. to have me open my own gym with no resources, no real guidance, mm-hmm. no, um, you know, no one telling me, you know, you should do it this way, because there were some mistakes along the way, just being a new entrepreneur, first generation entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Um, I just um, hope that I can inspire someone to keep going, even when it doesn't look like it. Um, so there were a lot of, a lot of hard nights 
nights um, where I question, is this what God has for me? Mm. And he would give me some little tidbits, little nudges, a phone mm -hmm. call here, a space mm -hmm. here. You know, people calling me, is your gym open yet? Not yet. Not mm -hmm. yet. So that really, that really fueled mm. me um, just to know that I didn't stop. Because there were opportunities to stop, right? I could have took the easy way out. Yeah. And I, I think I, I don't. Um, I wouldn't have been able to rest if I did, mm -hmm. if I did stop. I wouldn't be at peace like I am now, knowing that I didn't start this. We'll never know what would have happened if I didn't start this, mm -hmm. right? But I love that we have so many girls that will flourish from under my instruction. So I love that. I love that. <laughs> so, and just even from, you know, my own daughter, I come from a family of, hard-working women, mm -hmm. uh, women in prayer, just mm -hmm. God-driven women. So mm -hmm. I hope that I inspire my own daughter, whether she wants to have this beautiful gym mm -hmm. or not, that her mom accomplished some things, mm -hmm. right? So I would That's love good. for Drew to be able to find her way, for her to see that my mom did this for yeah. me and all these other girls. And um, I hope that motivates her to do what she needs to do in life. That's so awesome. I, I love that. It's something about having the child you birth, do what you love. Mm. Uh, so I, I love that, my little one. So. Oh, my kids are going to uh, make me a little podcast. Yeah, yeah right, right. <laughs> Have a follow. Like, like I said, we see so many other cultures that children follow suit. Yeah. Why right. not ours? Right. No, that's yeah. true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I like that. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, okay, and then, uh, of course, lastly, um, and thanks for answering my question earlier. Oh, what yes, you would like I threw that in. I threw that in. I like how she snuck that in. But um, I like to call this a challenge question because you have given us so much of your journey and it's been a beautiful mm -hmm. story just to kind of understand, you know, your humble beginnings. So for those who are watching, what would you say if we had to kind of take this and kind of condense it down? What would be three takeaways that you would like to give? And you kind of, sure, yeah. you kind of I gave us a lot, days yeah. some, but I guess to recap. Sure, sure. Um, so in sum, if you're just catching catching up right now, I would say in sum, um, for any business owner or for really anyone that wants to accomplish any goals in life, first understand your why. Mm -hmm. Because your why is going to guide you on those long days. It's going to keep you immovable, unwavering, mm -hmm. because as we know it, life will give you some character building experiences like so like when it. you know your why you'll stand firm against those storms mm -hmm. so know your why um also i'm gonna have to throw in that prayer and discernment because once you start that there's going to be a lot of people mm -hmm. kind of uh, saying good things bad things so you mm -hmm. really have to discern is Ooh. this for me yes, they are. right <laughs> um is this the path that i'm supposed to go down um because it's one thing um to do what you want but are you in purpose Right. So, um, what is it being successful if you're not in purpose? So, I think kind of understanding is this God's will for me? Is He aligning my steps? Right. So, I think that's really important. That's um, and I also think, um, lastly, um, just knowing who you are, mm. um, which kind of essentially ties into your why. But I think because I am so in tune with my life, who I am as a strong black female, I know who I am and there's nobody that can take that away from me. Um, so I think, I think um, when you know why you're doing what you're doing, I know who I am. Um, essentially with those roadblocks, those storms, I'm going to keep going. Mm. So, you know, with those rainy days, there's gonna be those sunny days. Yeah. So I think, and I'm, and I'm speaking to myself as well. So I, you know, there's some days where I'm like, you know what? All right, God, you have me do this, but can you continue to align my steps and order my steps? So I yeah. really think in knowing who you are as an individual, mm -hmm. outside of the business though, right? Mm -hmm. um, because when you get those calls or something happens, you know, everything's going to essentially come back to the business owner. Yeah. So knowing that if you're in your purpose, you know who you are and you know your why, you will never fail. Mm, so. <laughs> a couple for that. That's good right there. And you know what? I, I'll say this to anybody, to anybody who has a podcast. These interviews, talking to yeah. these, breaking about yourself, these literally fuel me. Yeah, they so I'm do. Like, oh, wow. They man, do. I'm like, man, am I doing Receive it, receive it. I, I receive are. it. Yes, yeah. I do. For sure. I wouldn't have this platform if it wasn't for you. If you did not have this idea a couple of years ago, look how many businesses you've highlighted that we wouldn't mm. have known about. Yeah. How many, you know, cu new customers they've had. Like, you are doing what you need to do, and I'm just so humble mm. that you guys consider oh, me. Come on, like, that's, oh, like, come on. It's like, I'm just, wow. I'm just really, and I, you know what, I am special. I am God's child, but I just think, like, you know, you provide opportunities for small businesses, mm -hmm. and I love that. I love that. I'm so appreciative. No, we appreciate it. And like, yeah. I, 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 I'm humble at the fact that people won't even come to our platform because, like, you know, it, it, this is time to take out the day that you could be mm -hmm. doing your business and you came to say you want to sit down with our audience. We, I know our audience appreciates it. Yeah. I know this one is going to do numbers. So oh, I already thank know. you. So, yeah, so we definitely appreciate it. I love it. it. We don't get to a million views. We're going to speak that. Come on. We're going to speak that. Come on. I, 
I received that. Receive it. I definitely received that. And I'm going to check his way. That's yes, right. yeah, yeah. Listen, right. Shannon Sark hey, numbers. <laughs> we get the Cat Williams exactly, spirit on exactly. this episode. Exactly. Well, you're I on purpose. It. You're doing what you, you are aligned to do. You received it, Coach. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And I feel like this is the most important question of the whole sure. interview. Where can people learn more about you? Where can they look yes. you? Where can they find out more overall? Yes, please. So um, we have Facebook at Balance Cheer and Gymnastics. Mm -hmm. We have Instagram at Balance Cheer Gym. We have TikTok at Balance Cheer Gym. Mm -hmm. Our website, um, super detailed. The times are right. The mm -hmm. prices are right. When you go to our <laughs> website, you know that is what now. you are seeing. So our website is balancecheergym.com. Um, always happy to reach out to talk, to talk to you guys. If you are a parent that doesn't necessarily live in our area, even if you just want to talk to me about your child struggling in a predominantly black gym, I will listen. I have had parents call me. They don't even go to my gym, just to event. So I am here for you. And wow. I, I love that I create a space for our, our children and community. <laughs> this has been a good episode. Aww, yeah. Thank you. And for all the ladies people, that will be in the show now. So no yes. excuse as to why you don't know. Yes. Oh, where's it at? It's right there. Yes, Let, yes. Right there, right there, so right there, okay? Thank you so much. Yes, Coach. my pleasure. I, I thank, you. thank you guys. I love you guys so much. I'm just truly honored. We are honored. Oh, we are. Thank I you. know. Thank you. Yes. I to be a name. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be Okay. Oh, awesome. mm -hmm. oh listen. Uh, guys, we got to pay some bills. Uh, yeah. Guys, so I right, so we pay some bills. Guys, uh, we doing April 18th. I know you probably going to go to the gym, but. We'll make time. We'll make time. Okay. Well, listen. So that's good. That's, that's, that's a great uh, uh, question we asked you because. April 18th, guys, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. David Shan of the Social Proof Podcast will be here in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. We have bring him here to Cleveland. Now, we got to show out because, listen, he's from Atlanta, so we got to show him that Cleveland can do can do Atlanta-type things, okay? He's come here to teach you about how to create your podcast, how to monetize your podcast, how to literally just create a whole ecosystem around your podcast. Mm -hmm. That's what he's coming here to show you. And he's coming here April 18th, and we have him here, okay? So, listen, and get, the best part about all this thing, guess what, guys? It's free free what you need to do because we're only down to 20 tickets now mm -hmm. it was 30 last week now it's 20. Yes, it's purchased. uh and it's free it's, it's, it's you know free. Free. Oh, yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's the best part about it that is. all you have to do is text podcast seven all one word to three 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 seven seven seven. Please, my home. Because you did. I, I applaud you for trying. No, I, I, I tried, but as soon as I'm like, uh, let me let me throw it over because you know I don't remember that stuff. But yes, guys, get your tickets now because they will they're going real fast. And this opportunity once again to be in the room with creatives, innovators, That's entrepreneurs, awesome. mm -hmm. and just great people in not even in Cleveland, but you know, instead of Ohio, we have people coming from Columbus, Cincinnati, Dayton, Toledo, coming to be in the room with a person who. Is one of the not in the country in the world top five mm -hmm. entrepreneur podcasts in the world. So get in the room, it's gonna be a good time, okay? That's good. Over to Brittany. Hey guys, make sure you check in weekly to my podcast, Beauty Told. Yes. Again, giving you guys advice, whether it be relational, whether it be financial or lifestyle. And again, having some great guests on so we can kind of expound on those topics. And the overall goal is that we have a positive change. We can learn from our mistakes, and we know that it was not done in vain. Mm. So I look forward to seeing y'all there. Stay tuned. Yes, and guys, I want to do. I want to make sure I, I especially say thank you, the person listening, the person watching this podcast, because right now we're at almost 7.5 million views on YouTube, and then 15,000 subscribers on um, also, and that once again is unheard of. And you want to talk about being a purpose mm -hmm. and God's mm -hmm. alignment. When I tell you, I look at, I do the research, I'm a connoisseur of these things. And for us to do the numbers that we've done in the time we have done it is unnatural. It's not mm. even commonplace. So you guys are showing us that the need, the, this is all part of God's plan. Okay, yeah. you guys want to hear great stories like Coach K's. So we just want to thank you for once again supporting by sharing, liking, subscribing. We can't thank you enough. So continue to do it. Mm -hmm. Don't stop. <laughs> continue to do it. Tell your mom, tell your friends, tell your uncles, tell them all. Okay? <laughs> tell the full experience. And we just want to thank you guys for that. Okay? We don't never want to get to a place where we don't thank you guys for that. Thank you. Okay? So guys, we will, episode 197. 197. 197. Road short episodes, guys. We will just want to, it's, it's, that's a real blessing. Okay? Uh, we will see you guys next week. Peace. Thank you. <laughs>